And good afternoon and welcome to the season finale of Jam Central from the studios, Bixville, California, and I'm Rick Hudgens. And alongside me, my co-host today, Bakersfield, California Zone, Zach Ewing. Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rick. Happy to be here. And we'll be recapping some of the best moments, Zach, of the 2014-2015 Jam season, including highlights, call-ups, the showcase, off-the-court events, and, of course, some of the funniest moments from the studio that we've had. We've had a lot of fun this year. So before we jump in anything, let me introduce our guest. Our guest is the Commander-in-Chief of the Bakersfield Jam, Head Coach Nate Bjorkren, who led the team to a 34-16 and regular season record as the number three seed in the Western Conference playoffs and guided three players to receive NBA call-ups this season as well as winning the first Showcase Tournament trophy. Coach Bjorkren, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Coach, share a little bit about your thoughts on the entire season. number of good things have happened. Your thoughts. Yeah, it was a, it was a great group of guys to coach. I know I've been saying that all year, but it's the truth. You know, we went through, uh, you know, a lot of different things, and, and it's a typical D-League season. And the fact that players were called up, uh, players went overseas, we had some uh, young guys, we had a mix of veterans. So um, it was a great season. And, and you mentioned those three guys getting call-ups. Not only were they call-ups, but all, all three of those guys, and Earl, Elijah, and Jarrell, they signed with their NBA team mm-hmm. for the remainder of the season, which is rare. You know, so uh, it was a great year for a number of reasons. Coach, you established a winning team culture while bringing out the best out of your players. We saw it time and time again. A player would leave, somebody else would step up individually, and they reflected that on the court. So let's take a look at some of those best plays of the year. Gets it to Jackson. Nice feed. P.C. Prather cocked it back, and he shows what a big Woo! boy does when he's in the open floor. Koshwal the screen, McNeil doesn't use it. Nice cut by Prather, and Jarrell found him on the baseline drive. Four apiece, seven in total, and the Jam have a 10-point lead. Joe Jackson Whoa. with a one-handed throwdown. Joe Six foot, but look at that, no problem. Get up and throw it down by Joe Jackson, the super sub. There was a lot of contact, but no foul called, and somehow the jam, come on! Oh, baby! Here it is! And you will be seeing that on this about every highlight. Played by Adrian Thomas. Millsap, the lob and a one-handed thunder by the big boy, Earl Barron. The Earl has come to play with a little Jumanji there. Superhuman stuff there. (laughs) It was. Coach, you had a chance to work with such diverse talent. I mean, you look at these guys on the floor, Earl Barron, you know, what a consummate pro, uh, came in as a veteran, and then... Elijah Millsap, he did everything you wanted him to do when he made the trade for him. And then the rookie, Joe Jackson, and, and Casey Prather, the rookie. So, you know, tell us a little bit about this diverse talent these, these D, and these D-League veterans, as, long as, the, as well as the rookies, and how they kind of blend together. How do you fashion that? Right. Well, first of all, you know, watching those clips, and that was the first time I, you know, I saw the, the you know, the highlight film there. You know, obviously, I, I lived every one of those with the players. But, you know, every one of those clips was set up on a nice pass or nice passing or or a great screen. You know, and that's what our team was was made up of all year. And and you talked about you know what the veterans brought to the team. You know, I had a chance to coach Earl Barron in Iowa, so I knew what kind of a guy he was, and I knew what kind of a leader he could be with the young guys that we would bring in. Um, and, and our guys, you know, in our exit interviews yesterday, they all mentioned Earl Barron and the impact that he had on them, mm-hmm. his professionalism, the way he worked, the, the things that he would say to those young guys when they weren't playing right away. You know, and the same thing goes for Elijah Millsap, as you mentioned. I mean, he's the first one in the gym, the last one to, to leave, and, and, and that's a fact. Mm-hmm. And he's an elite defender. 
you know, he, he got his chance to play in the NBA with the Utah Jazz because he was the best defender in the D League. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had a few guys that would be right up there, right up there with them. You know, Jarrell's up there and Max up there. And I mean, those guys defend, you know, so that stuff all rubbed off on those young guys. And then when Casey Prather got his opportunity, now Casey's having to guard the other team's best player. You know, Joe Jackson hounded that ball all year uh, full court. So those guys, uh, they really were able to learn from the vets. And the young guys, when they got their chance, they were ready to play. Coach, it was typical that from day one there was buy-in, whether they were veterans or, with, or whether they were rookies. They believed in you. They believed in your coaching staff and your system and in what the Suns are doing with this affiliation. And you, gave, you delivered on your promise. Three players uh, signed multi-year contracts in the NBA. So let's take a look at one of those players, Elijah Millsap of the Utah Jazz in action. For this Cavalier team. One bucket after another. Millsap on a catch and shoot three. Got it. Elijah Millsap, first bucket of the night against the Cavs. Booker, Millsap pumps up a three. Got it. This group right here, they're playing some basketball. I mean, they're getting stops on the defensive end. They're making a little run here. I mean, that three ball and reverse it. It was a two-point shot. Millsap, nice run up the chest of love. And Elijah Millsap with a... You know what you like about Millsap is he just plays hard. Defensively, he gets into you. Look at him. He just bothers LeBron. He'll foul you a little bit. Tip it. Count it. Millsap in double figures with 10. Nice drive. Foul. It's about being aggressive in what you just said. Uh, so yeah, he might be a little undersized, but he makes up for it with his heart and his determination on the defensive end. It's pretty good stuff there. I mean, the guy's scoring double digits. He was in Bakersfield for the first half of the season. Coach, you told me last week that besides hugging your own kids, hugging that guy who gets a call up is the best feeling in the world. Uh, how, how much have you kept in touch with Elijah, and, and, and how's he doing? About two or three times a week. Wow. So it's uh, – and it'll be that way for – for years, you know, I, it's, you know, I, he was the first hug that I gave. And, and, and the thing about Elijah is I had so many NBA scouts and, and, and things saying, ah, he's not an NBA player. He's not an NBA player. And, and I tell you what, a couple of years ago when I was, you know, when I was the head coach at Santa Cruz, we were playing LA on a regular basis mm -hmm. and he was awesome. And I just, uh, he was hard to play against. And I actually voted for him for MVP that year. Wow. Um, and then when we had the opportunity, when his name was in the conversation um, for a possible trade, you know, talking with Bubba, I'm, I'm like, Bubba, let's get this guy. Bubba loved him too. And, uh, you know, he had such a great year. And then and then you see he sticks uh, half the season with the Utah Jazz, so it's great. I think it's next year, too. So I think, uh, I think uh, Elijah wanted to come here, too, he told me, early in the year. So the other side of guys moving up is that you get some guys – moving down and obviously the jam works closely with its parent club with the with the phoenix suns and you got four different players this year uh archie goodwin was the mvp of the showcase cup he was a big part of that uh what do you say why don't we take a look back at some of those assignees we have reggie bullock we have archie goodwin we have several other guys tj warren uh let's let's take a look at some of those nba assignee highlights dunk of this game for archie goodwin he is making it Look easy on assignment from the Phoenix Suns. Williams are Rick, that's pretty good stuff there, man. That's uh, we. I was watching the Suns play the Clippers last night, and it was those guys on the court like exactly. thirty minutes. Yeah, uh, Earl, Earl, and uh, Jarrell really got uh, their minutes worth last night. Zach, best plays of the showcase. We saw a number of great players there. Uh, Archie Goodwin, first ever D League showcase, won by the Bakersfield Jam, and it's a tournament that is unique, Nate, because in the past it was just an opportunity for NBA scouts and. And maybe coaches, if they're off, you know, they have an off day to go and watch these players in action. And, and it's led to a number of, of 
NBA call-ups in the past. But this year was a little different because it was a tournament. So share a little bit about that and about Archie's success there as well. Yeah, the showcase was our first team goal. Uh, we knew they were going to take the top eight teams from the D-League and, and hold a little tournament there. So that's a championship in itself. But I'll tell you this, during that showcase, um, that was kind of the, the the breakout point for our team on the season. We played together so well um, during those few games, and, and it was the best time for our guys to play together. I mean, the gym was full of NBA GMs and assistant GMs and scouts and international scouts, and talk about a great time for your guys to play team ball. My phone during that showcase and Every day after the showcase never rang more because of our guys really did a nice job of playing hard for each other, and then they all started getting noticed more as individuals. But you named it. Uh, Archie Goodwin was was with us during that time, was named MVP. It's another great tribute to his teammates on sharing the ball and playing team defense. And, you know, you look at guys there that, you know, Earl was on that squad. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, we were we were down 10 in the fourth quarter on the, in that title game to Grand Rapids. And, and there were guys like Casey. C. Prather and Joe Jackson that stepped Jamil Wilson that stepped up huge in that game um, down the stretch and and uh, it was a definitely a, the, the highlight of the year. Yeah, and you know, Coach, the interesting thing about it is some fans may not realize that you play 24 home games, 24 road games, and then two games at the showcase, and one's supposed to be a home and and an away game. But that third game, you get to the championship, it doesn't even count on the mm -hmm. overall record. And I remember the fatigue. It, I mean, it became a true war of attrition between two teams that really wanted it. And Grand mm -hmm. Rapids, obviously, you know, trying to promote themselves in their first year uh, uh, in affiliation there. But uh, that was uh, that was quite a feat. And I know uh, Ronaldo, of course, named the trophy GG, and he's had it in the <laughs> studio. And it was an exciting mm -hmm. time. So congratulations on that. Certainly a highlight of the year. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Well, all right, we're going to take a break. We'll go right back, uh, be right back with head coach of the Jam, Nate Bjorkren, as we relive some of the best moments of the season. So stick around, and we'll be right back on Jam Central. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Bakersfield Life Magazine is a monthly lifestyle publication that features local people, places, and businesses. It is available to be read on bakersfieldlife.com and publishes the last Saturday of the month with many convenient pickup locations. Find us online on Facebook or Twitter as well as bakersfieldlife.com. The new book is out. That was easy. I would title this thing sort of a description of what raising children is like. You know, that was easy. I've been writing columns now for about 25 years. Writing has always been a conversation. You're taking somebody by the hand for three or four minutes and you're not letting go. The new book, That Was Easy, nothing easy about any of this, but we've had some fun and I hope you guys will have some fun looking at this book. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet, computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, any place. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. 
Current Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit currentbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on currentbusinessjournal.com. And welcome back to segment two of Jam Central. I'm your host, Rick Hudgens, and alongside me today from the Bakersfield, California, some of you know him as Schoolhouse Zach. Today he <laughs> is Big Jam Zach. And Zach, thanks so much for coming back. Zach Ewing. Zach, not, not much co- big about me, but that's all right. <laughs> Zach, you've been covering uh, the jam this year. Uh, and just before we kind of get back into it, Coach, and we talk about the, the young sons with head coach Nate Bjorkren of the jam, the chairman of the board here, who's done a phenomenal job with the Bakersfield jam, a 34-16 and 16 record, just to recap, a showcase tournament title, first ever showcase title. Zach, share a little bit about what you've learned about the Bakersfield Jam and kind of the culture th- this year. Oh, I mean, it was a great team. I think it was especially a great team early in the season when they had all these guys, all these talented guys we've been talking about and showing highlights of. And, uh, you know, the, the team that you took to Santa Cruz for the Showcase Cup, if you had that team now, you'd probably have a game tonight. I mean, that's that, I, not, not to put anything down about the guys who are out there now, but that's just the the, the bottom line. And I think part of that is, is, is coach here do, doing a great job. I mean, I, you look before the season, his record speaks for itself in previous seasons. And, uh, he was able to, to bring that to Bakersfield. And I really think, you know, one of the benefits of having sort of that closed in environment where everybody's a season ticket holder, everybody comes to see just about every game. You, you sort of get that family atmosphere. I don't know if you agree with that, Nate, but I that's, totally agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, playing in a big arena is cool also but it's it's a it's a different environment i think that helps foster it and yeah the ending was sad on sunday for the jam but it, it was uh, it was a fantastic season exactly and uh coach you know we're we're recapping the best moments and i know you've had many of them and part of that is coaching those young sons let's talk about tj warren for a little bit mm-hmm. Yeah, we could talk about him for a while he's got a, he's got a <laughs> lot to his game uh, tj he has an unbelievable ability to score the ball. And, and what I mean by that is he can be up in the air, twisted, get hit, play through hits, and he really can score buckets. And he can score them in bunches. He's a great nose for the ball. He has great instincts. And even when you watch him play for the Suns here the last month, two months of the season, he's a great cutter away from the ball. He, he finds open areas. Like when he was with us, he could rebound it. He could drive it. He would shoot the three. So um, he has a very bright future, and he was a lot of fun to coach. And T.J. Warren, while he was on assignment, he had a season-high 40 points, 10 rebounds, averaged just under 27 points a game, seven rebounds, 1.6 steals, and just fit like a glove with everything you're trying to do here with the jam and seemed to be – uh, you know, have a positive influence as well on those guys who are trying to get up to the NBA. Let's take a look at some of TJ's 40 points. Good of the night. We know Damian James can slash, and the area of his game he's really working on is outside shooting, and a nice cut back door for TJ Warren for minutes. Yeah, nice. Four NBA prospects and former GM of the Orlando Magic, Otis Smith, as their head coach is TJ Warren saw the floodgates open and he took it to the rack for the but, uh, so far you gotta like what wilson is doing at 6'8 230 pounds to be able to step back and stroke that three was good and then tj warren showing why he was the ac jam now four of four beyond the arc off the texas miss here comes Ennis in transition got it to kashwahan behind the back to a cutting pulling up his lamb and he can't connect from 20. Good hustle by T.J. Warren. Uses his body control and floats it into the hoop. As a starter, but Griffin has looked awfully good. He's the only thing that's really keeping the legends in the game at this point. And T.J. Warren just buys a little. Damian James, Ronaldo Baltman, the five on the floor for Eduardo Najaraz. Texas legends and T.J. Warren. That's going to be a goaltend. James go to his left. He's not as good off the dribble to his left. He likes to put the ball on the floor. 
and go strong with the right. And TJ Warren with a big bucket there. So Warren and in it. Congratulations to Coach Voigt, and uh, we wish him well. He did a lot of good things here building this program in Bakersfield. And TJ Warren is 24th point. Oh, nice defense that time by Millsap. Totally picking James's pocket. And then right down Broadway's Warren Counts for another three-point play. Way mark of the fourth, and Balkman put it right into the hands of Ennis, who will take it the distance and miss. Ball taps around and finally put in by DJ Warren. That was a terrible, oh. And the jam get it, and TJ Warren scores his 38 to TJ Warren. James comes out on him, Warren gets the rim, throws it up and scores in the paint. 40 for TJ Warren. Coach, that is some exciting stuff. And we're seeing him, as you mentioned, we're seeing him do it. And Zach, you watched it last night against Clippers. TJ Warren is starting to get significant minutes. Just like he did at NC State, he finds a way to score. Yes, he does. I mean, and, and you saw in those clips there the, the the multiple ways that he can score. You know, and you're going to see that with him. You know, through this summer and 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 next year with the Suns, he's going to continue to improve. Um, like like you saw, I mean, he can really score that ball. And and the other thing about TJ too is is in the D League with us, he can guard multiple positions. You know, he was guarding one through four man for us, and and that was another you know great piece of experience that he could take back with him to Phoenix. And you know, just him being here, being involved in close games late and playing in big games, it will it will help him for his future when he's in those big moments um, in a Suns uniform. I think. Uh besides all the on-court success you guys have had and, the, and, and when you're practicing, working hard, I think the, one of the cool things about really any professional sports team, and it certainly applies to the jam, is all the off-the-court stuff you guys do, the community stuff, the, the charity stuff, and, and that's certainly been, uh, been a part of, of this season as well and for these guys. And I know that's, that's got to be one of the most rewarding things you do. It is. Our guys do a do an excellent job with that, um, and they really enjoy it. It's not like I have to drag them, drag them places, drag them out of bed, or get them there. So um, our players feel that family atmosphere in our arena, and and at the same time, they feel that the community is very involved, and and they are great uh, when we go do a number of different things. We got some clips from a few of those things here. We're going to start with NBA Fit Week, the X Factor uh, program team visit, and then spreading holiday cheer as well. Okay, so that was the holiday cheer, but there were some other things too. We uh, barbecues, luncheons, visits to, to elderly people, and everything. I mean, how important is that uh, to, to have your players do it? And I know you said you didn't have to to pull any teeth, and that's got to be nice too. Yeah, it was it was great, and it's it's nice for our players to do it, and they and they want to do it. You know, you saw clips from the from the hospital visit that we had there. It was a it was a neat day. It was it was a nice day for us to to talk to some of the patients. And you know, I want to thank John Van Boning for you know for for being there and 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 having that opportunity for our guys to to do that. And and it just it makes our guys understand that there's a lot more to life than than just playing basketball and and. And being a being a great guy on and off the court, which these guys were the entire season, got to see some of that too this year. Yeah, and you see, you know, Nate, it, it speaks volumes about how far this jam, the Jam has come as an organization. You look at majority owner Stan Ellis and minority owner David Higdon, and the fact that they've wanted to not only build a culture here, but to bring character quality people mm -hmm. in. And this year, I mean, it has been an absolute, uh, you know, just a, a joy uh, to watch. Uh, so proud to, to watch the way that uh, our team has, has conducted themselves this year, both on and off the court. Uh, and, you know, the Jam Faithful, they really got their money's worth this year. You know, you talk about our, our uh, season ticket holders, uh, 
who keep the jam going financially, uh, but they certainly got their money's worth, and, and I know they appreciate everything uh, that you and the guys have done this year for the organization. Well, well you set it up there. I mean, Stan and David, when I talked to them yesterday, I, I told them both they have an amazing setup here. I mean, this this is it. I, I've I've coached at other places. I've visited them all as an opposing coach. This is the best D-League setup that there is. And mm. Stan and David deserve a lot of credit for creating this atmosphere. And then you gotta and you gotta thank the Phoenix Suns on the partnership on that. Mm. The Phoenix Suns could not have used the D-League any better this year than what they did. You know, and they chose the the Bakersfield Jam for a reason with the facilities and the people and how the guys can totally focus on basketball 24-7. Um, so it was, uh, it was an amazing partnership, and it, it's a great setup here. Yeah. Coach, I know uh, you're following everything. I know you've been watching Jam Central. You're watching your players. You have fun with them. Uh, there's, a, there's a time for fun, and there's a, a time for everything right in its season. So let's take a look at some of those great clips from Jam Central. When uh, – Old Jarrell McNeil and A.T. Adrian Thomas <laughs> took over Jam Central. Comrade. Thomas, A.T., you know, the one and only. And we are here today holding it down, taking over for a few hours, yeah. and we're going to host this Jam Central. We gave somebody a day off, you know what I'm saying, just to <laughs> help them out, you know. Yeah. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> this is the first quarter, the Jam Playbook. Introducing assistant coach Dylan DeBusk. DeBusk. Yeah, joining us for a second time on the show. Dylan, how you doing today, man? You all right? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Maintaining, man. You know, just trying to live it day by day. Another day, day another day. dollar, yeah. you know? Yeah. Please tell me about your look today. What you got going on right now, man? Uh, what you... Well, you stand, know. You know what? Stand up a little. Stand up for the camera. Just just make sure the camera sees Hey, do a spin. Do a spin. Do a spin. spin one okay. time. Ah! Okay. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so, come back now. Come back. Now talk, get back on the mic. Get back on the mic. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so, so talk, talk about your look. Man. I, my blazer from uh, Zara, you know, one of my favorite places to shop at mm. online. Mm. You know, That's that European Zara. shop. Zara, yeah, you shout got to know about Zara. that. And, you know, then I just have on some regular True Religion pants. Oh, you know? True Religion. $300 mm. a pair. That ain't yeah. regular. Just what about the watch? What about talk, the watch? Talk to him about the watch. Yeah. What's that? That's a Michael Kors. Michael you know? Rose Gold. Rose Gold. MK. Uh. You know? It just, uh. you know, hey, I, it say you're doing eyes. your thing. you know it's all about the accessories. And, and what we call this hat, that's the, uh, it start with an F. I don't know the name. It's my grown man look. Man. Fedora? Fedora. Fedora. Talk to him. Fedora. That's the grown, what you call it, the grown man look, it's right? Grown man, hey, boy, hey, boy no, you're doing your thing. And he got the Michael Jordan chain on back in 88. Look that's, at that's the that's look the choker. Don't know if it's real, it's but the choker. Hey, but, but but it looks good <laughs> on you. Hey, I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. But look, I really appreciate you guys noticing yeah. that. And you know it's the accessories. Hey, hold been... on, hold on, back up a little bit. X, yeah. X, you pretty stylish as well. That's what you what got going on? Do a three sixty for me too. I gotta do a three sixty. Yeah, yeah. Do a three sixty for me too. <sighs> Check me out though. Yeah. If you don't wear green on St. Patrick's Day, a you get slapped by someone. B you get slapped. You get to slap someone. Mm. C, you get to pinch someone. Mm. Or you get pinched by someone. D, you, you know the rest. Pinch. So what is it? A, B, C, or D? <laughs> you pinch. What? Where, which pinch. one? A, B, C, or D, if man? You, uh, hold on. You if, if I don't want to agree, yeah. you pinching me. Correct. How many hey, points? How many points? You, you can hold your 400. You got 400 right here. X. X, I'm going to give you a you're chance to do some catching up. Me, 300. Yeah. This one for 300. You said the last one. You know that one. X, <laughs> what kind of plant is associated with St. Patrick's Day? A, a daisy. B, a leaf. Mm. C, a shamrock. Or D, a rose. <laughs> uh, what was the last one? D, a rose. We'll go to shamrock. Mm. That's correct. 300 points for X. 300. He's down 100 points. Now. Let's go ahead. He got the 300. I got he the got the three. You got the four. So oh. we going we to get a I'm couple more wins. I'm going to give him a 600 right I'm gonna now. I'm going to find another 600, dude. Um, nah, there's only yeah. one of them. Oh, so you got to go up to like seven. Give me the six. Uh, yeah, to keep yeah. It. yeah. It was always a lot of fun when they got together for games. We've got even more. Uh, we've got Jameel Wilson and Ronaldo Major were in here playing a buzzer beater game. That was a lot of fun. 
And then we're also going to show that, and this is more serious, but this was a cool moment too. And I, I listen to these every week as well. Earl Barron talking his 2006 NBA championship season with the Heat with with young Casey Prather and kind of kind of dropping some knowledge on the young guy. Yes, he got it. Lion King, are you kidding me? I got it. Ronaldo Major humming Hakuna Matata. It can't get any better. I was like, hold on. I was waiting. And we all thought at first that that was Jurassic Park. That's what I'm saying. I was a lion. Man, that was good stuff. But I think that's the takeaway of the entire show. Okay. Um, you're gonna have, that's a tough act to follow. Uh, Jamil, do you want actions, uh, books, do you want movies, TV shows, or people? Let's do... Uh, this is quick assist, by the way. Quick people. assist. You're going to go people. people. Quick assist. Mm. All right, so um, Ronaldo uh, did a fantastic job mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm. You can talk now. You don't have to hum now. Oh, now okay, you can okay, talk. Okay, right? okay. You, uh, you, you're not playing at this exact moment, all right? All right. Now you will guess. You your will guess what dinosaur. this is. So you will guess what that this is. The lion dinosaur. And, and tell us when to go. Ready? And go. It's a show? Come no, you can't talk. I can't show. No, oh, you can't talk. Okay. Uh, Walking Dead. <laughs> you can hit, ag them on if you want. Yeah, you're getting close. Zombieland. Yeah, oh, my oh, gosh. Man. Guys. They got skills. Hey, got skills. Man. Got skills. Oh, man. Hey, uh, uh, quit basketball. We, Just quit. Nice Just quit. You know, they were all veterans. They were all, you know, future Hall of Famers. And they knew how to play the game. It's just a matter of, okay, us going out, executing and practice day in and day out, getting to the corners, getting to your spots on defense. And once the, you know, season started going, uh, I wasn't getting a, a lot of playing time. wasn't probably getting any playing time. But just sitting on the sideline, I was able to watch and take in everything and seeing that carry over into the playoffs and seeing, you know, the coach saying, okay, if this happens, this is what you might need to do, or if this is guys in the corner, you make sure you're at this spot. And seeing it happen on the court and mm -hmm. us get wins and, you know, seeing those guys who had never won championships like like Zoe and Gary Payton, seeing the, you know, emotion that, that came out, their families all on the court, it was, you know. And the city of Miami as well. The city of Miami was, <laughs> you know, our plane landed at like 6 in the morning and with thousands of fans out there leaning on the fence just to see, see uh, you know, the heat get off the plane. And, um, can't remember who had to try. I think it might have been uh, D Wade, but to horse the trophy up and hear them cheer, it was a, you know, it really didn't hit me for a few weeks after. But you know, I look back now and say I'm, you know, truly best, blessed to, to win a championship ring my my first year in the league. Wow, that is awesome. So what is it that you can tell he, this young cat? Probably just learned a lot right there <laughs> in that answer. Man. Just coming to the training camp, guys like Casey who are just amazing, amazing, you know, uh, college players with so much talent. Well, Coach, you know, great memories. Uh, hard to believe the season's over, but uh, you did a great job with these guys. And um, just looking at Matt Koshwall's development and how much of an influence Earl Barron seems to have been on him. I mean, we're talking about a guy who played 55 games this year, uh, just a warrior uh, the entire year. But, you know, we really enjoyed them all being on the show as well as you. Uh, and your wonderful coaching staff of Coach Tim Lewis and Dylan DeBusk and, and Tyler, as well as you know our wonderful training staff of Sean Mirza and uh, Jonathan Mack. But you even got a chance to go out and have a little fun. You got to go to New York, New Jersey, and you got to coach the 2015 NBA All-Star team. Share a little bit about that experience. What was that like, coaching all those superstars? Yeah, it, it was uh... – it was a great experience, you know, just watching those those clips with those guys having a good time in here from the past. It's, that's just the kind of group that they were. They were they were so together. And the coaches, you know, myself and the, the, the staff, we got to go and coach the All-Star game because of the players put us in that position. You know, that's a great team award, you know, and just being out there and, and, and having that experience was, was a lot of fun. You know, I'd been there before as an assistant coach, so to be able to go as a head coach this time um, uh, was great. But, again, even when I was out there, I was uh, I was enjoying the moment, but I was I was really looking forward to getting back to 
to Bakersfield and our guys because they were uh, that was just you know we were really rolling dur- there during that time. Mm-hmm. Coach, you you've coached a lot of teams in the D League over eight years. I mean, it's, it's the rosters are so much different. But when you guys were rolling this year, where does that stack up? You know, the, the, it's it stacks right up there. You know, uh, you know, last year in Iowa, I had a great group. Um, you know, last the year before in Santa Cruz, a really good group, and, and even in Dakota. Um, so it's. You know, as you as you guys see, you guys are real familiar with the D League. Your roster is, is has its highs and lows mm-hmm. all throughout the year, um, so it, it ranks right up there. And, and I'll tell you what, this team ranks up there really high at being the most together and, and, and great group. But but all of my former players, I, I love them all, and I continue to talk to those guys from Dakota and in Iowa and Santa Cruz. It just it never stops. I was going to say you must know just about every player in yeah. professional <laughs> yeah. basketball at this point. Yeah, Ven- Venezuelan league. Oh yeah, I know these guys and, and, that, and that sort of thing but uh, now that it's the summer things I, I hope slow down a little bit for you but what are your responsibilities now as far as with the jam with the Suns and, and moving forward with your players what do you expect from them yeah right now we're just really working on getting these players involved in summer leagues you know involved into mini camps um, and trying to lead that into a training camp some of the other guys we're trying to get them involved in in overseas jobs mm-hmm. so these guys will have some big choices to make which which mini camps to go to, which summer league to go to, do they take an overseas job or try the NBA? Oh, maybe it's the D League again next year. So there's a lot of choices that I'll continually you know talk to them about. Their agents will be with them, and and, and Bubba will will shoot them the very good advice that he always does. So there's just there's a lot to do. It never stops. And how about for yourself? You said you you'll be in Bakersfield at least a few more months. Yeah, you'll be in Bakersfield, but we're always you know getting ready for the for the following season. So you have to stay in tune with. Um, the young guys coming out of college, mm-hmm. the guys that might be coming back from overseas. So, you know, I don't get a lot, get to watch a lot of college basketball during the year. I watch, you know, the D League and NBA. Right. So, so now I'll take some time and and go back and, and watch some of the, the the college games from this year, the individual player clips from college games this year, and 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 also be involved with, in Phoenix a little bit on on with players that they bring in, and you know, summer league opportunities that I had last summer. So it'll be busy. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it never does. Basketball. Basketball never stops is what they say. <laughs> coach, fans have gotten to know you in terms of a basketball coach. And I look at you and I see a, truly, I mean, I don't want to steal from somebody else, but you're a silent assassin because you, you don't yell much. You have a, a certain demeanor. You have a way that you work with the officials. You have a way that you work with your players. You're a very hands-on coach and you're well-liked by everyone. So let me ask you this question. Can you share with our Jam faithful out there, our audience, three things about you that you would like people to know about Nate Bjorkren, not the basketball coach? It's a tough question. Put him on the spot (laughs) there. No, that's okay, though. Um, You know, just just as the person, you know, I really care for these guys. You know, I I do. I care about their futures. I, I care about what they're doing right now, you know, now that basketball's over. Um, so, so I'd say that that's, that that's number one. And, and, you know, the second thing is, is I have my family out here with me, you know, in Bakersfield. So, so my kids, they get to experience hanging out with professional basketball players, mm-hmm. you know, being able to, to sit over there in the corner and give high fives to these guys. I, th- the jam players are household names in my house to my five-year-old daughter and, and two-year-old son, <laughs> you know, so that, that just means the world to me that they can experience that. And probably the third thing is, is I'm just, I'm a guy that really wants everyone to stick together, you know, in, in, in all moments. And I, and it goes from the Phoenix Suns to the Bakersfield jam from the owners, the front office, the players, the staff. And it just, it was a great group great partnership to be around of everyone sticking together through the highs and lows in the season and and the d-league's not easy it's a it's a roster that changes and and players don't get paid the millions of dollars but it's 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 tough and it's fragile at times but just sticking together goes a long ways and he likes japanese barbecue we know we found that that's out. right <laughs> yeah teppanyaki yeah nice um coach you know what i can honestly say i mean i've been with the jam since its inception and this has truly been the most enjoyable, fun, uh, rewarding year for me as a broadcaster. So I appreciate everything that you've done, um, not only for the team, not only for the development league, but for the city of Bakersfield uh, and just that incredibly positive vibe that, that you've brought as well. Thank you for joining us on this special episode. We had a great time. 
we wish you the best of luck with everything in your family and good luck. I know you've got some work to do with the kids now that you're home for a little bit and the tough job begins. But Jam fans, to discover the hottest ticket in town at the Dignity Health Events Center, where sports and entertainment converge to bring competitive professional basketball, business connections, and first-class experiences center court, you need to reach out to Teresa Howard and find out how to become a Jam partner. We'll head to break and come back with segment number three. Um. Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your laptop, tablet computer, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersville, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield, California in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. The new book is out. That was easy. I would title this thing sort of a description of what raising children is like. You know, that was easy. I've been writing columns now for about 25 years. Writing has always been a conversation. You're taking somebody by the hand for three or four minutes and you're not letting go. The new book, that was easy. Nothing easy about any of this, but we've had some fun and I hope you guys will have some fun looking at this book. The Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit kernbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on kernbusinessjournal.com. And welcome back to Jam Central. We have been reliving some of the best moments of the 2014-2015 season from the best plays to call-ups, off-the-court action, and the funniest moments of Jam Central. So let's continue our journey down memory lane with our special guest, Jam General Manager, Mr. Bubba Burridge, and Assistant General Manager, no stranger to the Bakersfield Jam, Mr. Brian Levy. Gentlemen, welcome Thanks for joining us here on this final special episode. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bubba, welcome to see us. It's your first time. It's great to have you. And you've seen the jam uh, since the beginning from the tip-up of event, the draft, training camp, and all season long. So what did you think about this season overall? And did it meet the expectations that, that the jam and the Suns have put together for this squad this year? Yeah, for me, it was my first experience kind of seeing the whole D-League season evolve. So I really didn't know what to expect. And uh, Brian really helped me out in that respect, just kind of knowing what the ebbs and flow of the season was going to be like. So um, for me, it was a lot of fun, um, you know, not knowing how the season was going to start off. 
knowing that we had a lot of veterans and that uh, possibly some of them could get uh, called up or new jobs. Um, it was kind of fun to see the evolution of the team, see the assignment players come in, see how they you know, assimilated themselves in with the team, and then see the guys get called up uh, towards the middle and the end of the season, and then see the younger guys uh, really kind of blossom into uh, you know, young vets. Brian, uh, the, you're, you're a D-League veteran in every sense of the word. You've been through the rigmarole. How did this year compare to you? Obviously, re a really, really good team the first half of the season. Lots of ups, a, a few downs in the second half of the season. Uh, but it's just it's, it's the D-League at its craziest, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I would say it was one of the most rewarding seasons that we've had here. Um, the, the partnership between the Suns and the Jam was phenomenal. And you know, being an independent team for four years, you just don't have access to you know, the NBA side of things and the, you know, you don't have any control over call-ups and, mm -hmm. and assignments. And so it was just great to have uh, the synergy between the Suns and the Jam and the partnership and Bubba coming in. And it was just, it was great. Now, well, speaking of which, we've had uh, quite a few players come through Bakersfield this year who then moved on to the NBA and some who stayed here and played real well in the D-League. Got some highlights we're going to take a look at. A uh, few guys coming through in clutch situations. And here's Jamil on <laughs> hand and throw down like a big boy should. Check it out, Rick. I mean, that is beautiful. He got knocked off. Bakersfield with 15 on the timer. Ten on the timer. Millsap driving in, taking contact, and still finishing to tie it. In. There was a lot of contact, but no foul called, and somehow the jam. Come on! Oh, oh baby! And you will be seeing that on just about every highlight associated with the D-League one more time. As Elijah Millsap, quiet night offensively, but nothing quiet about that. a win last six minutes of this fourth quarter. All right, Travis, thanks very much. Legends on top by seven, and Griffin will poke this one in. It'll go to Millsap. Last time these two teams played, and he gets that offensive rebound after the missed free throw and gives Bakersfield another shot. Driving the baseline, Millsap count the basket on the foul by Mbaji. Say the long, lean frame. He's got easy hops, runs the floor well. He's got a nice soft touch. I mean, it's not hard to see why he's not the number one prospect in the D-League. Players in double figures as Millsap misses, got it back, got it back again, can't finish and then tapped it back up and it floated. Locked in his third assist. David Stockton. Oh, 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 oh. And oh my goodness. Jock clock for the jam. Here's Ronaldo Major. Right wing, driving left. Muscles to the foul line. Scoop shot. No put back. Jam, Mac Oswald. Yeah. Well, as you see, a lot of incredible highlights this year from dunks to passes, but I think uh, we can honestly say that it all happens because of teamwork and unselfish play. Would you guys agree? Defense leading to offense, gentlemen? I'll be unselfish <laughs> and let Brian <laughs> answer that question. I, I think the eyes have it. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there were some amazing moments and, you know, we probably could have made a compilation of best assists and that, that would have encapsulated our team as well. And, you know, one guy that... Uh, has just been the consummate veteran for this team. And as the years progressed, he's had to play more and more minutes. Uh, Ronaldo Major recaptures the all-time D-League scoring title as well as the all-time steals title. Your thoughts, guys, about Ronaldo? Well, for me, Ronaldo was a person that I always kind of saw from afar, just scouting, you know, for the Suns. And um, kind of an interesting character that I noticed everybody kind of comes up to and is engaged with. So for me, it was an opportunity to get to know him on a personal basis. And the the records that he holds are, are great, but just the person that he is and the quality individual that he is, I think gets lost in the whole thing. And, and the value that he brought to the team in that respect was probably uh, one of the reasons why we had such uh, unselfish play and, and such a successful season with the young guys coming on at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Ronaldo's the best, and Bubba said the rest. So <laughs> You're a poet and don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bubba, when it came to the decision, such as uh, assigning Suns players to the jam this year, 
were you satisfied with the overall performance when those guys were assigned here? Yeah, I, I told the guys on their exit interviews, we, we both shared with them that we just appreciated when we did have the assignment guys in, that they accepted them, you know, they um, just really just treated them like their, their teammates. And I thought it was great because when they go back to Phoenix, you know, they, they tell the, the guys there, our bosses, that they had a good experience. And, you know, then the next time they get assigned, they have no problem coming in. So, you know, from, from my standpoint, that was one of the things that I was hoping to accomplish was that the, the Suns would really, you know, want to use it as a tool for their development of their young players. And they did. Mm -hmm. They continued to have like a nice little uh, schedule set up for them. And then it worked out great because uh, in the, after the All-Star break, a lot of these young guys for the Suns ended up playing for, for the Suns. Mm -hmm. And the experience they got in Bakersfield really helped that. So I think they got a lot of value out of it. Well, let's take a look at, uh, you know, some of these Suns players, some of these Suns duos and how they perform on Bakersfield. Reggie Bullock, former Sun, Tyler Ennis, and T.J. Warren. Rebound, but it goes through his fingertips, and here's Bullock once again. You know, we haven't seen much from Bullock so far. Struggled a little bit from the field, and as I say that, of course, he drains a three. Yes, he will drain a three, Like, but like you said, he hasn't hit the bomb yet, and now he's ready. He's, he, he's round. Explodes all the way to the hoop, but rims out this time. Couldn't quite get the finish and back the other way in transition. Here comes Bullock. He's got a clear path to the rim, and nice finish on the right side of the rim. He's going to get all the way to the rim, and he's going to finish. He likes to go off glass, as he does again there. And he's having a good scoring game, and Bullock finally gets himself going, not shooting well. Good one. He kicks it out to the right wing to Ennis. Ennis works toward the lane. little drifter on the move, and he got it to go. Tyler Ennis gets his first bucket of the night. 10-6, Erie on top. Is Earl Barron working against Bohannon. Puts it on the floor, starts to back his way down, and then sends it back up top. Ennis straight on three-pointer. Got it. So Tyler Ennis has five points in the early going, and we are knotted. Pinneman put the ball on the deck, and Matt Koshwell, who was outstanding with thievery. Oh! Another one, and oh my goodness. That was a long range alley oop, and that's one way to get your game going. These people. Well, Suns assignees, of course, not the only ones being noticed in Bakersfield. A couple of guys, Earl Barron and Jarrell McNeil, get called up to the Suns and eventually signed by the Suns. Let's check out those Watch highlights. Barron. Barron working on Kirk. Puts it on the floor. Nice drop step. Left hand on the rim and in. That is an NBA move by Earl Barron. Two baskets, four point. Four court to the right. Between the circles, Chris Wright, right top to Vaden. Right block now to Earl Barron. Faces up on Kirk. Shoots the jumper and splashes it through. Three buckets for Earl Barron. Six water, right top. In for the ball game now, Jamil Wilson. Baseline is Earl Barron. Another jump shot, another make. Earl Barron, Fort Worth. Best of luck, and please stop by and see us again here at the Civic Center when you get back in town. On the drive, Earl Barron gets into double figures with 10. Charge 56-47. Left baseline, Earl Barron takes it and fires it and hits it. Earl Barron, 18. Left top, Robert Vaden. Left block, Barron going to shoot another jumper, hit another jump. This gives him a little quicker, quicker feet, a little fresher legs. McNeil, left baseline drive, reverse and puts it in. Whoa. McNeil, Barron screen and roll. McNeil getting into the paint. And this one he gets to drop. Spin move, kicks into the corner for Prather. Now here's McNeil, shimmies inside with the left hand over, Kuz and one. I don't know that move from Jarrell McNeil. That was a big bucket for the defenders. They, they needed a bucket there. All right, nice move inside for McNeil. Kelly came over, tried to protect the rim. Instead, it was a finish. Michael Williams, who slips at the free throw line. Numbers for Bakersfield. Jarrell McNeil, a contested three-pointer. And welcome back. Hey, exciting stuff, gentlemen. Earl Barron, Jarrell McNeil, both got significant minutes. 25 for Earl, 14 for Jarrell last night. That's what it's all about. We'll talk more about that when we come back. Don't forget, fans, to stay connected with the Jam. Send game suggestions. Submit game ideas. Have any feedback for next season's Jam Central? Well, you can contact us through our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or visit www.bakersfieldjam.com. And we'll be right back on Jam Central.
Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californian's daily deal featured on bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californian's daily deal featured on bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. Be aware, be connected, be enriched, be encouraged, be fit, be active, be seen, be successful, be wonderful, be wholesome, be amazing, be an example, be the cause, be the cure, be involved, be wise, be happy, be healthy, be well. A Bakersfield Magazine, quarterly inside the Bakersfield Californian, free with home delivery and on Bakersfield newsstands. Also online at bewellmagazine.com. Current Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit currentbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on currentbusinessjournal.com. And welcome back, Jam fans, to Jam Central. It is time for the last episode of Jam Central. It is segment number four. Joining us to wrap up the show is the two men who put the B&B in basketball, Bubba and Brian, General Manager Bubba Burridge, and <laughs> Assistant you work on that General one? Manager <laughs> Brian Levy, just uh, during the timeout like that I had. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Gentlemen, let's talk about the Jams midseason acquisition because, as we know, sometimes the D League can be a fly by night operation and roster turnover is done quite frequently and it can be extremely significant. So, Alec Brown, late second round Suns pick in the 2014 NBA draft. Starting with you, Bubba, tell us about his contribution to the team. Yeah, well, Alec came in, you know, he hadn't played uh, since Summer League. He had a few games in Summer League, then he got injured with his shoulder. So he was rehabbing his shoulder. So this was a chance for him to actually get his uh, wheels going again. And um, I thought that he came in uh, really, really well. I mean, I was kind of surprised at how f fast he, he, he got going there. Um, and then he kind of tapered off a little bit. And then he kind of regained himself. I thought that what he got out of the ex the experience mainly was that um, he got to experience playing uh, a more physical style of play than what he was used to in college. Mm -hmm. He didn't get a whole lot of that in summer league because he got injured. And I thought as it went, he kind of caught on to what he needed to do to kind of exist out there and, and impact the team. Um, he understands that he needs to gain uh, weight and he needs to gain strength. And I think as he'll get that, he'll he'll even gain more confidence. Um, he's a stretch big by nature, but uh, defensively, he's going to have to develop a little more strength. And um, I think that's a good uh, you know showing for him. Uh, you know, just in the span that he was with us in developmental league, and I think he has good potential. And there's a lot to look forward to from all those players. Unfortunately, we're we're running short on time. We could talk about these guys all, all afternoon, I'm sure. But we did want to take one more opportunity to show an off-the-court event, uh, the Jams annual Thanksgiving giveaway event where they give box dinners out. 
which is very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And guys, we talked to Nate about that, how important that is in addition to on the court. These guys were good guys. Great guys. Um, I think we've been doing that event for four or five years now at least. And um, they go with a smile on their face, and they know they're helping people, and uh, they're engaging with the people. It's not just a cursory, uh, here's your, your thing. It's a, you know, walk you to a car, talk to you, ask you about your family, ask mm -hmm. you what your situation is. You know, they, they really care about people, and uh, they care about each other, and it, I think it was very really evident all year long. Well, I'm sorry we, we can't spend more time with you guys, but that's probably a good, a good way to end uh, just to talk about, you know, these are good athletes. These are great basketball players, and they're also great people. Mm -hmm. We appreciate uh, Brian Levy, Bubba Barrage, coming by and joining us uh, in Jam Central, Rick. Yeah, gentlemen, uh, you know, can't say enough about the kind of season we've had. Uh, some of the highlights led the league in steals 10.6 a game. Turn those steals into turno uh, turn those turnovers into points highest per game. Won the inaugural D League showcase. Three players called up the NBA. So thanks so much, gentlemen. Thanks so much, all of you, for tuning into Jam Central this year. It has been uh, a distinct privilege for Zach Ewing, for Vance Palm, who is out of the studio today, and for myself, Rick Hutchins. Thanks so much for joining us. Only on Jam Central, and as a parting gift, here is our player thank you video. We'll see you next year. Hello, this is Casey Prince. Standing here with Adrian Thomas. Now, what's your nickname? We'd like to thank you guys for supporting us all season long. You've been great. Thank you. I love you. Love you. Love you. Oh, hi. Um, on behalf of me and my teammates, I would like to just thank all you guys for all your continuous support all year, for everything you've done for us, even the interactions on the side of the court and hassling the referees. Uh, we appreciate it very much, and uh, hopefully you see Thanking all the partners and fans. Um, you guys were so welcoming to me this year, coming in late, um, you know, coming back from an injury, and appreciate all the support you gave me. and. All the support you gave the team, and you guys are great fans this year. Uh, it was great getting to know some of you. And, and I don't know if I'll see you guys next year or not, but you never know how the future turns out. And uh, I just want to thank you again for everything you've done for me this season. Okay, y'all, um, it's Joe Jackson. I want to thank all the fans and um, all the people that put this together um, for having me this year and um, blessing me with the opportunity to come out of California for five months to uh, play basketball. If I ever get an opportunity and I have to come back to the D-League, I would I will definitely consider Bakersfield. But I'm just thinking we're off everything. Hey, hey, what do you say? Let's go, Jay. We want to thank all you guys for the support you gave us this season. And hopefully we have the same support next season. Thanks for everything. I want to say thank you, Bakersfield Jam, sponsors and partnership. Thank you for the love and support this year. Although we didn't win it all, we want to thank you for everything you did for this year and the crazy fans that you were. Hopefully next year you can be crazier and we can win. <laughs>